Good morning. At this time, please bow your head for a blessing of the food by Pastor Randy Jumper, followed by a blessing for leadership by Attorney General Tim Griffin. Lord, we're a room of people with like minds and like hearts. And we pray today that our moments together um, would be for your glory and for your good. We thank you for this great country that we are allowed to live in. We thank you for this great state. We thank you for these great people. In this room are men and women of influence, men and women of authority, men and women who, um, who need your help to lead well. And that's my prayer, that you would bless this food. We're thankful for it. But would you bless the men and women in this room as they make decisions, as they become influencers in our communities, as they make change happen in the way that it should happen. Lord, I pray that you would empower all of us and that we would live our lives to the glory of your name and for the good of this community and these people. I pray it in your name, amen. Please join me in prayer for Arkansas leadership. Dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, thank you for our many blessings. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. We are all imperfect in need of redemption. But we can all be used. We ask, Lord, that you use us all, whether we be leaders, regardless of what we do in our community. Use us for your good, Lord. We know through the Bible that you used many imperfect people for your good. And Lord, we ask that we take a moment to focus on the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today. You used him mightily. You used him to move mountains. He like us, was an imperfect human, but you used him nonetheless. And his example still shines today, and that's why we gather here to honor him. When we are faced with difficult decisions, we can look to Dr. King. When we are nervous, anxious, weak, lacking courage because we are afraid of the consequences of the right decision, we can look to Dr. King, who stared death in the face and continued to do what was right. Lord, we thank you for that example. We thank you that we're able to gather here today and learn more about Dr. King and be reminded of his strength and courage and how you used him on this earth. Help us not to just enjoy a breakfast and go about our way. Help us to leave here renewing the mission to do what is right and have the courage to do so regardless of our role in life. We thank you again, Lord. We ask that you bless us as we walk day to day. We ask that you make us obedient to your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.
Thank you for standing for the presentation of colors by the Arkansas State Police Honor Guard and the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by Amanda Hood. We ask that you please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance presented by Ruby Metters. show me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sean Scarborough and the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. I am Bernice A. King, CEO of the King Center in Atlanta, Georgia, and the youngest of Mrs. Coretta Scott King and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Allow me to congratulate you on 30 years of excellence and service to the King legacy. Also, let me commend you the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission for your continuing efforts to promote the life, the work, and the legacy of my father, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and I dare say my mother, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, 
across the great state of Arkansas and especially among the next generation. My father talked about the fierce urgency of now in his writings. His words and teachings are just as powerful, just as vital, and just as urgent today as they were during the civil rights movement. As we look across the expanse of our world with the current state of affairs, including increasing violence, wars, political polarization, growing social tensions, and persistent injustices and inequities, his nonviolent philosophy and methodology are especially needed now more than ever before. He often taught us the aftermath of violence is death and destruction, but the aftermath of nonviolence is redemp redemption. The aftermath of nonviolence is reconciliation. The aftermath of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community. At the King Center, we define nonviolence as a love-centered way of thinking, speaking, acting, and engaging that leads to personal, cultural, and societal transformation. In light of all of this, we need to encourage our young people to envision the beloved community where injustice ceases and love prevails and to prepare them to do the work of creating a just, humane, equitable, and peaceful world. You, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, have been our partner in this work, and we look forward to linking together in even greater ways in the future. Again, congratulations from me and the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change in Atlanta, Georgia, also known as the King Center, and for helping us keep the dream alive and helping us to advance the legacy of nonviolent social change. Together, we win with love for humanity. Be encouraged, my brothers and sisters, and let's keep it going. God bless each and every one of you. Good morning. Welcome once again to the 2023 annual MLK Prayer Breakfast, hosted by the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. As the first chairwoman of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, it is indeed my pleasure to welcome you today. It is truly an honor to serve the commission under the leadership of Arkansas's first female governor, the Honorable Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and the first female lieutenant governor, the Honorable Leslie Rutledge. As a division of the Arkansas Department of Education, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission takes great pride in traveling the state, inspiring communities through service and outreach, and teaching youth about the nonviolence principles of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As we reflect on 30 years, I am proud to say that we have traveled to every region in the state including several underserved areas hosting service and community building projects. It is during these programs that youth obtain valuable training to lead service and outreach projects within their own communities. During the past year, the commission hosted more than 70 hybrid programs, virtual and in-person across the state. At this time, I would like to take the time to recognize the following. Commissioners of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission who represent all four con congressional districts. Please stand. <clears throat> 
At this time, we also have a special presentation, um, an unveiling by Commissioner Derek Scott. And y'all, he painted this portrait. <laughs> I would also like to recognize Gina Wendell and Dr. Ivy Pfeiffer, Arkansas Department of Education, present on behalf of Secretary Jake, Jacob Oliva. <laughs> Rock Region Metro, who is hosting free bus rides all day in honor of the King legacy. Thank you all for your support. <laughs> On behalf of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of you who are here today. Thank you for joining us for this moment in history, this moment in time, as we celebrate and honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. As I look out over the audience, I see unity. I see diversity. The beautiful, the beautiful people gathered today on one accord. This is what Dr. King worked so hard to make happen, unity. Therefore, it is important to teach our children about the legacies of great men like Dr. King. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission teaches young people that greatness is obtained through service. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. realized that service is the driving force behind building better communities. Standing for the cause of public servants brought Dr. King to Memphis in April of 1968 to support the sanitation workers strike. As we observe the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission's 30th anniversary, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission is hosting a statewide community service challenge. Today, the commission would distribute more than 12,000 pounds of food to individuals and families. Right now, community service projects, acts of kindness are taking place across the state in honor of Dr. King and his message presented by Dr. King more than 50 years ago. It's sad, y'all, that y'all could hear me even without the microphone. <laughs> Life's most urgent and persistent question is, what are you doing for others? What will your legacy be? What will people say about you 50 years from now? What can you do now to inspire greatness within your generation? Our goal is to help youth and communities across the state evaluate their community's greatest needs and work collectively to provide ongoing outreach to promote a culture of understanding, nonviolence, and service. Think about your legacy and the kind of world you would like for your children to live in 50 years from now. From there, you will know what you can do and how you can work with others to carry on Dr. King's legacy. We invite you to join the work of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. Once again, thank you for starting your day with us. Enjoy the remainder of the King holiday. Please welcome our Mistress of Ceremonies, historian Tiffany Pettis. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Monday, January 16th. This is a historic day and historic year as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Federal King Holiday and the 30th anniversary of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. The mission of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, a division of the Arkansas Department of Education, is to promote and preserve the life and legacy of Dr. King in our state and to promote the principles of nonviolence and equality among all citizens. 
Our community outreach projects are designed to promote education and an appreciation for history and to encourage youth to engage in positive leadership development and roles within their communities. I'm Tiffany Pettis with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, your mistress of ceremonies, and we would like to welcome you to the 2023 annual Interfaith Prayer Breakfast, honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. And thank you. And so we are honored today to begin the new year by hosting the 2023 King Holiday Interfaith Prayer Breakfast at Arkansas's home, the lovely, the beautiful, historic Governor's Mansion. And we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia to Alberta and Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. He was the second of three children. As far as Martin's father was concerned, young Martin would continue the family tradition of pastoring. While a student at Morehouse College, young Martin, who was only 15, thought about classes in medicine and law, but things changed when he took a Bible class. So today, we honor his life and his birthday, which was made into an official holiday at the White House Rose Garden on November 2nd, 1983. And this year marks the 40th anniversary of the Federal King Holiday. President Ronald Reagan signed a bill creating the federal holiday to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And King Holiday was observed for the first time on January 20th, 1986. So today we gather to hear reflections and celebrate the life and achievements of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so as we honor Dr. King's impact, we also recognize the interfaith aspect and his influence from many, including the writings of St. Francis of Assisi, Protestant minister Martin Luther and Mahatma Gandhi. Along the way, we'll hear reflections as we hear quotes from the writings of Dr. King. Several scholars in their writings about Dr. King even noted that prayer was a way of motivating, affirming, reaffirming, and empowering people in the context of the struggle for civil rights. It has even been quoted that prayer was Dr. King's secret weapon in the civil rights movement, a key to its success as people found the strength to continue. So we thank you once again for starting your day with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. And in remembering 30 years of excellence and service, we would also like to acknowledge that Attorney General Tim Griffin has never missed a prayer breakfast. <laughs> as well as U.S. Congressman French Hill and also the Lieutenant Governor Leslie Rutledge. Never missed a pleasure. <laughs> and so we would also like to take this opportunity to also recognize some very special guests visiting with us, an acclaimed legendary actress who starred in several local productions and the Academy Award-winning movie Sling Blade. Please welcome Miss Judy Pryor Trice. <laughs> Also, visiting with us, Academy Award-winning legendary actor who starred in An Officer and a Gentleman, Mr. Lewis Gossett Jr. is visiting with us today. <laughs> Mrs. Trice is featured on the cover of this month's 501 Life magazine, along with our own executive director, Mr. Deshaun Scarborough, and they share the cover with the late legendary governor, Winthrop Rockefeller, and the theme for this month is Lives of Legacy. And so the publisher, I believe they're visiting with us today, Ms. Stephanie Brazil and Mr. Jeremy Hickenbotham. Please raise your hands. So today, great and small, we gather to honor one man who believed in faith. As Dr. King once said, faith is taking that first step even when you don't see the entire staircase. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he had faith and he had a dream. And so we gather to receive inspiration about continuing his legacy within our own individual lives and paths. The words of Dr. King live on and on and continue to influence generations of leaders. 
The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission diligently provides opportunities for young people across the state to participate in all of our programs. And so we would also like to acknowledge this morning the Parkview Jazz Band for providing our music. And at this time, coming to the stage, Baseline Bilingual School is a micro school located in Southwest Little Rock. The founder of the school is Mrs. Ida Wells, who is a veteran teacher with more than 43 years of educational experience. She has a BA degree in elementary education and a Master of Arts in Educational Leadership. Ms. Wells uses an independent choice learning model that addresses each individual student's learning style. Ms. Wells' educational philosophy is that all children can learn reading and math not in the same way and not on the same day. Baseline Bilingual School will begin with a special prayer for Honorable Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, presented by Tatiana Jones. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Tatiana Jones. Please bow your head as we present this prayer to Honorable Governor Huckabee Sanders. Dear Honorable Governor Huckabee Sanders, you are amazing. You are an inspiration to young women like me and an example that all things are possible through Christ. Thank you for the legacy that you are building. Like Queen Esther in the Old Testament, God has favored and placed you for such a time as this to lead. May he continue to crown your head with wisdom and fill your heart with courage for the days ahead. Wherever you go, may the Lord order your steps and go before you. May the Lord sustain your passion for service, knowing that when you serve others, you serve God. When things are difficult, may peace rule in your heart. We pray for you and your family. The Lord will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. At the end of each day, may you find that quiet place and get some rest. We declare that everywhere you go, you will be blessed and be a blessing. We pray that the Lord would grant you with the grace and strength to get through each day. To Governor Huckabee Sanders, our 47th governor, may the Lord cover your term and bless the works of your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh. Okay.
Thank you. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission invites you to the 2023 A Day of Service, Day of Impact. That's 11 a.m. today at the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, 906 Broadway, in the heart of downtown Little Rock. There will be community service initiatives like free meals for the at risk, free COVID vaccinations, voter registration, preventative health screens, food giveaways. So make King Holiday a full day. At this time, please welcome Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr former commissioner, Ms. Lupe Peña de Martinez. Good morning. My name is Lupe Peña de Martinez. It is truly an honor to be here with you. I had some introductory comments, but I realized that 1983 was the declaration of this holiday. It's also the year my family came to this country. So it is a true honor to be here. After those many years, you can start calculating how old I am. I was not even two years old yet. Um, but I have been a proud Arkansan since 1998, becoming a US citizen since 2008. So when I hear the national anthem, when I see this amazing flag and this flag, which has really brought me my life, brought me everything, that I can say thank you. It has now been 18 years of service in education here in Arkansas, and I hope many more. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission is a nonpartisan agency that aligns exactly with the mission and vision of our esteemed governor of Arkansas. Under the leadership of the executive director, Deshaun Scarborough, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission hosts programs in all four congressional districts. Dr. Bernice A. King, the youngest daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., has lauded this commission as being the most active in the nation. I think that deserves a hand. <laughs> Repeatedly, the commission has been asked to use our knowledge and expertise in assisting other commissions across the nation to become sustainable and active and we can give all the training in the world, but all of you here are part of the reason for our sustainability. Thank you to each of you. The, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission is having a momentous year, serving Arkansans of all ages and cultural backgrounds throughout the four congressional districts. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission's programming is diverse, tailored to the needs of each community, including hosting programs in English and Spanish, where the communities are increasingly Spanish speaking. Every city has a unique history and has diverse challenges. All cities throughout Arkansas are beautiful, loving, welcoming places. And the work of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission is important because it is a demonstrative step in ensuring that everyone knows how welcoming and amazing our Arkansas is. It is important that Arkansas is reflected as the welcoming state that we all know we live in. The role of the commission with communities is to change perceptions and images that do not represent who we are. Our statewide outreach is designed to be educational with a rich appreciation for our history. We encourage youth to engage in positive leadership development by offering thousands of hours of volunteer opportunities because all of us here are not getting any younger and we need the youth to be actively engaged and continue the work of Dr. King. The need for service, the need to give back, to mentor, and to teach others. The opportunity to change lives and make a difference provides opportunities for the disadvantaged people in our community. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission provided free vaccine clinics for the unsheltered population. We also hosted and continue to host food giveaways during the periods of most need to address families impacted by food insecurity. When we talk about service and Dr. King, 
We want to make certain that we are working to serve the basic needs of each individual, which means we may be serving meals, we may be providing access to health care, or we may be partnering to be mentors to the youth. Another pillar of the King Commission is curbing violence and providing programming that involves various issues affecting the community. The idea of curbing violence is especially poignant to me since my father's 2016 murder here in Little Rock still remains unsolved. In Dr. King's final sermon, he spoke about how mankind has made the world a neighborhood through technological advances, but has failed to advance in becoming a neighborhood. We bring communities together through service and brotherhood. Therefore, it is our commitment to be inclusive. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and teachings focused on one thing, serving others. He believed that you could never be fulfilled without a life of service. The challenge is for all of us here to take a moment and ponder what we are each contributing to bring that dream to life. A life without service is a life devoid of purpose. Leadership is about influencing one another. In essence, what the Arkansas Martin Luther King Commission aims to amplify each and every day, not just on this holiday. At this time, I am honored and pleased to welcome my friend, my mentor, my inspiration, the Executive Director of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, Mr. Deshaun Scarborough. Please give him a hand. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, there was a time when I could just look out amongst you and do a speech and read my paperwork, but now that uh, time flies and birthdays come along, I have these. So I've always wanted to do that in front of everybody. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for joining us on King Holiday. You know, at this time, uh, some time ago, a friend of mine, Pastor Randy Jumper, he's an audience, please stand, Randy Jumper. He made a point when we started the King Commission prayer breakfast some time ago. He said to me, he said, Deshaun, a prayer breakfast is a prayer breakfast if you have more prayer. And I listened to him, as I do, because I liked, I, I love constructive criticism, and, and he, he hit me with it, and I started thinking, he's right. So we wanted to engage more prayer. And at this time, I would ask Secretary Darrell Bossett to come up and pray and do a special prayer for us, a prayer for our governor. Secretary Bossett. Let us bow our heads as we come to our Father in prayer. O oh, most heavenly Father, we bow to you today because we know that it is you and you alone who is our true and living God. Yes. You are the one who has created all things and even now, O oh Lord, we know that your son, you uphold the whole universe by the word of his power. Everything and everyone we understand belongs to you, O oh Lord. All that we have and all that we are is because of you. It is in you that we that we move and live and have our very being. So we come humbly this morning before you, Lord, the supreme architect of our universe, to pray for Sarah. Your word instructs us to pray for all people and especially for civil authorities in high positions. So today we pray for Governor Sarah Sanders, and we thank you, O oh Lord, for her. We thank you for her wisdom and we thank you for the courage that you have given her. Watch over her, 
Heavenly Father, and watch over her family and protect them. Encourage her daily, Father, with reminders that you are the one who has instituted civil government and that you have called her to serve and you have placed her in her role as governor to do good for the people of Arkansas. Empower her, O oh Lord. Empower her with good counsel and with strength to fulfill all of her responsibilities that go with the office. Help her to carry out her duties with, with joy and in fear of the Lord. And deliver her, Father, from the fear of any man. Continue to strengthen the great vision for our state that you have placed in her. For we know, Father, that without a vision, your people perish. Nurture the good will, Father, that you have placed in Sarah so that she will always be reminded to think of the least of us. Guard her, O oh Lord. Guide her. Hold her in your unchanging hands, especially, Father, in times of difficulty, in times of stress, in times of uncertainty. Let her not become weary of doing good. Receive our praise this morning, Father, as we lift her up and answer our requests because we bring them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is an honor to introduce the 47th governor of Arkansas and the country's youngest governor, Governor Huckabee Sanders. Thank you for the opportunity, ma'am, to serve under your administration. Today's event is historic for several reasons. This is one of the first events in the governor's mansion during Governor Huckabee Sanders' term in her first 100 days in office. I've had the opportunity to engage and speak with Governor Sanders and hear her vision for Arkansas. It was incredible. When we spoke, I saw an ambitious leader, one who wanted to make Arkansas a better place for her children, for my children, for our children, black, white, Indian, Hispanic. I saw a mother, a wife, and I'm reminded of the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, we cannot walk alone. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was surrounded by people who believed that change and greater was possible. We're going to rally around Governor Sanders. We're going to support her vision. She is passionate about education and children. She's Arkansas's education governor. She is the product of a great legacy, a legacy that was prepared by another great governor who was a family man and another first lady who helped prepare for greatness. Now I had an opportunity to meet someone else special, the first gentleman, Brian Sanders. Give him a round of applause. When I first shook his hand, he embraced me, introduced himself. But it wasn't just that, it was the genuineness. He made me feel as though we had known each other for years, and I appreciate that. We made an immediate connection. And I'd like to thank you, sir, First Gentleman Sanders, for your support of the governor in her role, as you are also a very important part of this administration. You know, the Bible reminds us that love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. And we have a lot in common, sir. We both have three children, two boys and one girl. My kids are DJ Kennedy and Braxton. Their children are Scarlett, Huck, and George. We both have kids that are the same age. And I don't know about you, but in, in my family, Kennedy's the boss, the girl. <laughs> and I love being a girl dad. But when I think of Kennedy, I think about the legacy inspired by your wife, who has set the right aspirations that my daughter can also, to one day, become governor. We are both working for a better Arkansas. That is what Dr. King envisioned, a different world 
for his four little children. In her historical role, Governor Sanders, the governor of Arkansas, is an inspiration to not only my daughter, but women who would like to lead in public service. At the age of 40, she is the baton of leadership that has been passed to younger generation to lead. Through her role, she is encouraging women all over and everywhere to become leaders. Together, right now, we can take a pause and celebrate. And as a native son, I love serving Arkansas. And I'm honored to serve under the leadership of Arkansas's 47th governor, the Honorable Sarah Huckabee Sanders. At this time, I would ask everyone to please stand and join me as we welcome to the stage our 47th governor, the state of Arkansas, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Deshaun, you're a tough act to follow. I'd have preferred to go first so I didn't have to follow both you and Daryl. Uh, thank you both so much. Brian and I could not be more excited or more honored or think of any better occasion to officially open the governor's mansion for the first time since taking office than to do so on this day. and to celebrate the incredible legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the 30th anniversary here in Arkansas. So thank you for your service to Sean and the leadership that you provide to our state and for making us number one in this space. We are incredibly proud and thankful for all that you do. I also wanna thank uh, Daryl Bissett, uh, Secretary of Labor, a great friend, uh, an amazing, Arkansan, a great leader, and most importantly, a strong representative of our state and just an incredible person. So thank you, Derek, for your service. I have, I have big shoes to fill as I stand here, both uh, from my dad having served as governor for 11 years, but also from people that I'm sharing the table with this morning who have clearly made this a big priority uh, over their tenure in other offices, and Attorney General Griffin, Lieutenant Governor Rutledge, Congressman French Hill. We are blessed to have amazing leadership here in the state of Arkansas. Appreciate you being here, not just this morning, but every single year that you have led and for your leadership for the state. You know, Dr. King once said that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Dr. King was a true American hero who helped lead the fight against the evil of racism and answered God's call to treat every single person with dignity and respect. One of the most impactful moments of my entire life was as a student at Central High. I'm excited to see Dr. Linda Johnson here who was my counselor during my time at Central. But I stood on the steps on the 40th anniversary of the Little Rock Nine, and I watched as then President Bill Clinton, my dad, Governor Huckabee, Mayor Jim Daley, opened the doors to those nine students that had once been shut in front of them. What an amazing moment for Arkansas to now have those students who were once barred from the schoolhouse memorialized in bronze at our state house. I know I will never forget that moment and the impact that it had. And I'm thankful for Dr. King's legacy that he left for each of us and the call to action that he left for each of us not just to let this be a moment where we reflect on the past, but a call to action where we step forward in service. In today's challenging times, I believe that there is no greater calling for each of us than to look for how we can serve others 
and to lift one another up instead of tear one another down. And that is the legacy and the life that Dr. King left for each of us. I'm excited and looking forward to our keynote speaker, Miss Arkansas, who has done a tremendous job representing our state. We know that you will give us a message of compassion, of love, and of hope. And we are so thankful for your willingness to be here and to represent our state every day on the national stage. And what an honor it is to have you here this morning. Again, Brian and I want to say thank you for letting this be our first official event, Deshaun. Thank you for what you have brought here today. I hope that this can be a marker and set the tone for everything that we do over the course of the next eight years here at the Governor's Mansion. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you and God bless our great state. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Give him a round of applause. You know, we're so thankful that you opened up your home for us today uh, to be able to allow this first uh, MLK celebration of 2023 to take place. It's because of you all, it has been a success. So thank you so much. I would like to give a presentation to you, Governor, for our 30th anniversary. 2023 Award of Appreciation. And it says it's presented to you in recognition of your support of serving others and hosting our 2023 MLK Interfaith Prayer Breakfast. Thank you so much for all of you. right here to be hosted in your home. It wouldn't happen if you guys didn't give that green light, so thank you so much. It states that in recognition of your support, sir, and for serving others, the whole season, 2023, MLK Interfaith Prayer Breakfast, this is awarded to our first gentleman of Arkansas, Brian Sanders. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Governor Huckabee Sanders. Dr. King once said, not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Each year, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission honors the service of various individuals and organizations during the King holiday season. The commission hosts volunteer opportunities across the state for thousands of young people to participate in varied community service projects. Programming designed to connect young people to Dr. King's dream of nonviolence and community service. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke about the fierce urgency of now, and now is the time to connect younger generations with Dr. King's dreams and principles of nonviolence, peace, and acceptance so that they will be able to carry it on to the next generation. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission congratulates the 2023 recipients of the Susie Everett Youth Community Service Award. Please welcome our sponsor, Ms. Susie Everett, for this special presentation. Here. Oh, that. This has to stay here. All these
please. Uh, I'm Susie Everett and with the Everett Auto Group, and it's such a privilege for me to be here. I'm honored to be able to present in this great room. I feel the encouragement and the unity, and I'm thankful to be in this room. And I'm presenting the 2023 Susie Everett Youth Community Service Award. There's a saying, the future of the nation lies in the hands of youth. The more we empower our youth today, the brighter our nation will witness. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. It's important to educate our youth about service. And since the youth of our country are torchbearers, it's critical that they are directed in the right path. They should be able to understand the sense of compassion and brotherhood. Great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. taught these teachings. He, they were able to encourage and guide youth on the right path. And the youth of our society have the potential to bring about much needed changes and lead by example for the next generations. Community service is such an important part of any community. Community service brings us together and engages us for a common cause and teaches young people about com compassion and not just to live for oneself and to serve only their needs. Most of all, community service creates a great platform for our younger generations to learn valuable life lessons. Dr. King realized that the way to greatness was paved through the footsteps of service. Our young people are to be commended and celebrated when they commit themselves to community service and positive words that promote goodwill and brotherhood. On behalf of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission and the Everett Butte GMC brand, which prides itself in community service and customer service, I am pleased to present the 2023 Susie Everett Youth Community Service Award to Sabrela and Jaleesa Ferris. They have been volunteering for the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission since they were in elementary school. They recently assisted the commission with their Christmas food and toy giveaway, which reached thousands. They attend East End Middle School. They love art, and they are proud members of the Lady Mets basketball team. Please join me in congratulating Sabrela Ferris and Jaleesa Ferris, the 2023 Susie Everett Youth Community Service Award. Congratulations. Oh, there's their award. Jaleesa. Thank you so much, Ms. Everett. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the quality of, not the longevity of, a person's life is what is important. Part of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission's purpose as a state agency of Arkansas is to develop, coordinate, and advise the governor and general assembly throughout the state and throughout the year of public community outreach activities relating to the observance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his noble tenants. Throughout his years of social leadership, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. encouraged all people to address pressing social ills through citizen service. As he once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission proudly salutes Bishop Chester L. Thompson Jr. Born and reared in Hampton, Arkansas, he is the senior pastor of the Zion Hill Baptist Church and founder and presiding bishop of Agape Christian Fellowship International, comprised of churches in Arkansas, Colorado, Illinois, Mississippi, Wisconsin, and the West African nation of Ghana. He established handfuls on purpose food distribution to serve the elderly, disabled, and unemployed in his area. 
He was awarded the Bronze Star Medal, United States Army, Republic of Vietnam, where he has served for the past 35 years. Bishop Thompson also imparts the gift of giving and service through youth employability workshops and a bicycle ministry, riding with a purpose. He works tirelessly to empower the next generation of leaders to be successful and productive citizens socially, culturally, economically, and spiritually. Please join the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission in congratulating Bishop Chester Thompson Jr., the 2023 MLK Outstanding Service Award recipient. <laughs> Reverend Patrick Gullen, Commissioner Patrick Gulley will present the award to Bishop Thompson. Bishop, I have watched you as a child, watching you mentor people like my age and even people younger for years. You have been a faithful servant and still doing what we all was made to do and that serve humanity. God bless you and God grant you with much strength to keep on doing what you was born to do. Thank you, doctor. Standing before a jammed packed crowd at the Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee, the night before his death on April 3rd, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we no longer have a choice between violence and nonviolence. The choice today stands between nonviolence or non-existence. Please welcome Mr. Ernie Paulson, KRK Fox News 4 and Fox 16, as we prepare to present the 2023 Drum Major Awards. Thank you. Deshaun asked me to speak about victory over violence. It's our program that our stations launched um, back in 2017. And it came on the heels of a pretty violent 2016, which ended with the deaths of two toddlers, two-year-old Ramaya Reed and three-year-old Asen King. Drive-by shootings, end of the year, holidays, families should be celebrating. They buried two toddlers. We knew that we had to do something. And in news, a lot of the time, you're just reporting bad things. And we knew that we needed to do something more, so we launched Victory Over Violence. The mission statement is this. Cover crime in a responsible manner, focusing on impact, response, and solutions. Victory Over Violence aims to unite community groups and leaders and be a resource for reducing violent crime and changing lives through improvements in education, jobs, mentoring, and hunger. We started out, we got a lot of leaders. Congressman Hill uh, was very instrumental in, in, in getting this going. We had community walks, prayer rallies. We had a mentor match telethon. Uh, did stories called Searching for Solutions. Um, and when we did this for a while, and, and then Deshaun Scarborough and my, our paths crossed. And when we kind of, I think we both realized that the Arkansas Martin Luther King Commission, everything that it's about, everything that he does and the group does across the state was about impacting people, especially kids. And I truly believe the MLK Commission is not only changing lives, it's saving lives. And he is the energizer bunny of community service, public service. He wears me out, he calls me all the time. But when he calls, I answer, and when he asks, I always say yes because I want to be 
a part of it. I want victory over violence to be a part of what the King Commission is doing across our state. At Thanksgiving, they gave out 20,000 pounds of food for needy families. We had a victory over violence uh, food, a telethon to benefit the Arkansas Food Bank, raised more than $60,000, which provided more than 300,000 miles, or 300,000 meals to needy Arkansans. Deshaun has nonviolence youth summits across the state. We do them almost every quarter, but it seems like we're doing them almost every week. All that said, all that we're doing, when we launched Victory Over Violence because of the violence in 2016, there were 42 homicides. 2021, 65 homicides. 1993 was always the number that you could never reach. It was 70. Banging in the rock, everyone's heard it. It was the gang, the gang wars, 70 was never gonna be reached. In 2022, we had 81 homicides in the capital city. 81. These are names, not numbers. These were moms, they were dads, they were sons, and they were daughters. And a lot of times, they were kids that were doing the killing. 14, 15, 16 year olds who are charged as an adult and will spend the rest of their lives in prison. Two families lost when that happens. Deshaun and I talk a lot, what, what more can we do? We've got to do something that, that, that makes more of an impact because the numbers are going up. And I truly believe that it starts with our kids, it starts in schools, we've got to do more mentoring. We're the capital city. We've got all the players in this room. I ask for everyone's buy-in. If Deshaun Scarborough calls you, answer the phone. Answer the call. We need to make our kids' futures brighter. We need to set them up for success so one day we all in the state of Arkansas can declare victory over violence. Real quick, I want to thank a few people that have been instrumental with Victory Over Violence over the years. Austin Kellerman, Robert Holt, LaFell Jackson, William Graves, and there's so many others. But two of them I want to bring up here right now. Fox 16 anchors Donna Terrell and Kevin Kelly. They have done more this last year th 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 than anyone. Deshaun calls, and, and we need someone to host a non-violence youth summit. Donna's done several of them. You know, she, they, they anchor the 9 o'clock news, and a lot of times these summits are, uh, you know, three hours away, two hours away. They're getting up at 6 a.m., going out and doing these and still coming back and, and, and doing the news. Uh, Donna, everyone knows Donna. She is committed to making this community, making Arkansas better. She's always there. She's always talking to people. Kevin, one of the programs that we do that he started is called Step Up and Stop Bullying. He goes to these nonviolence youth summits and he asks all these kids to take a pledge to stop bullying and tell stories and gets them to take his pledge. These two. They're great anchors, they're, they're great newsroom citizens, but they're great people and they are great community leaders. So I'm so proud to present them with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission's 2023 Drum Major for Community Leadership. Give them a round of applause.
Thank you so much. We would, we would also like to acknowledge that um, Mr. Kevin Kelly has participated in several programs hosted by the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, traveling the state with us, promoting his Step Up Stop Bullying campaign in Fordyce, Little Rock, and Lavaca, Arkansas. And also, Ms. Donna Terrell has also toured with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, gracing us with her presence in Monticello and Dumas. Both have worked very diligently with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission to promote hope and healing in, within these communities after there have been, th those cities had been impacted by negative incidents. So we want to thank you once again for all that you do. <laughs> the letter from the Birmingham jail is an open letter written on April 16th, 1963 by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The letter is now regarded as one of the greatest texts of the Civil Rights Movement. His final thought is a vision of a nation united in brotherhood. The readers coming before us today will read excerpts from the Six Principles of Nonviolence and a letter from the Birmingham Jail. The Six Principles were outlined by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his famous essay, A Pilgrimage to Nonviolence. They serve as the foundation of the teachings of Kingian nonviolence conflict resolution and are often referred to as the wheel of nonviolence. There is a candle at each table. We ask that you please turn it on or use your cell phone light as we listen to the readers reflect and pray to work towards nonviolence. Our first reader for nonviolence is Honorable Leslie Rutledge, Lieutenant Governor of Arkansas. Thank you, what honor and a blessing it is to be here today. Nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. We remember the conviction of Martin Luther King Jr. that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Therefore, let us pray for courage and determination by those who are oppressed. Nonviolence seeks with friendship and understanding. We remember Martin's warning that a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, is less than a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. Therefore, let us pray that those who work for peace in our world may cry out first for justice. Our next reader is Mr. Jimmy Muhammad. Nonviolence seek to defeat injustice, not people. We remember Martin's insight that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. Therefore, let us pray that we may see nothing in isolation, but may know ourselves bound to one another and to all people under heaven. Nonviolence principle number four, Pastor Randy Jones. Nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform. 
We remember Dr. King's lament that the contemporary church is a weak, ineffectual voice with an uncertain sound. It is so often the arch supporter of the status quo, far from being disturbed by the presence of the church, the power structure of the average community is consoled by the church's silent and often vocal sanction of things as they are. Therefore, let us pray that neither this congregation nor any congregation may be silent in the face of wrong, but that we may be disturbers of the status quo when it is called upon us. Nonviolence principle number five, Mr. Rashesh Chokani. Nonviolence chooses love instead of hate. If you remember Martin telling us, we must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always right to do the right, to do what is right. Therefore, let us pray that we take care of one of our more precious resources, time. Nonviolence principle number six, Lupe Peña de Martins. Nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. We remember Martin's hope that dark clouds of racial prejudice will soon pass away and the deep fog of misunderstanding will be lifted from our fear-drenched communities. And in some not too distant tomorrow, the radiant star of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation with all their scintillating beauty. Therefore, in faith, let us commend ourselves and our work for justice to the goodness of the Almighty One. Amen. Thank you so much. Please like us on Facebook to see photos from today's commemorative events honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Bard Luther King Jr. and share your photos using the hashtag Day of Impact or AMLKC. For more than 10 years, the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission has worked with the city of Harrison, Arkansas to promote peace, unity, and to build the beloved community Dr. King wrote about in his writings. Harrison residents have traveled with the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission to several commemorative events throughout the nation. The commission has also hosted virtual and in-person programs in partnership with the City of Harrison, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Harrison Task Force on Race Relations and Diversity. Please welcome Honorable Mayor Jerry Jackson of Harrison to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, I think before the introduction, uh, Deshaun said I could say a few words. And I sit over there this morning thinking, uh, do I really want to say what I'm thinking in front of such a dignified group of people? And I concluded I must. And that is a brief history, folks, of Harrison, Arkansas, which many of you realize we have a perception in Harrison that has haunted us for 50 years. It started back in the mid-1970s when a man by the name of Tom Robb moved to a little town called Zinc. It's 20 miles from Harrison, but he took a P.O. box in Harrison and officially became a Harrison address. We immediately became the most racist small town in America. And I want to move up to 2000. We formed a task force on race relations, done a whole lot of good. It's in existence today. And in 2010, Deshaun arrives. And for the last 12 years, we have done some remarkable things with the commission, with his staff, at least once a year, sometimes two and three. They have become a part of our community, working with the city, the school district, and, uh, and the task force. And it's, uh, thank you, thank you, Dick. Uh, it, it's been amazing, but then in uh, 2000, uh, shortly after the murder of George Floyd, 
we had protests. We've never had protests before. They came from everywhere because we were the most racist town in America. And they protested day after day after day for months. And just when you think things can't get any worse, it gets a lot worse. We have a man in California that said, oh, I see an opportunity. And I'm going to Harrison and I'm going to film people. And I'm going to get some horrible things said. And I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to make a lot of money. He did just that. For three days, he stood outside of Walmart and filmed people going by. He's holding a Black Lives Matter sign and people are saying disgusting things. We have 24 people say horrible things in three days. When it went live, it went viral immediately. And in a matter of no time, he had five million views. People were calling my office from everywhere. Hate emails, hate phone calls, the most horrible time in my uh, administration. And Deshaun, Deshaun helped me through this a lot. And I thank you so much for that. You remember. You remember. So, we get together that very same day that the video comes out. All of the community leaders get together because the sky has fallen. And I say one thing, I want to talk to those 24 people. And so we put a team together. I've been there 45 years. I still know everybody. We had pictures of everybody. We went out to find them. We found three. We only found three. And that gave me hope that that video wasn't true because that was a surprise to me and it was very sad to see those things said. Maybe I need to be back here. I don't know. But with that said, um, thank you. I wore out your mic. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, Shortly after that, in 2022, I want to tell you, folks, this is the bright side. Things change. We start the year. We go to Selma, Alabama, a group from Harrison along with your group. We go down there. We do some great things. Uh, we speak on the Capitol. Uh, I think Fox 16 carries us that night on the Capitol steps where Martin Luther King spoke to 100,000 people. Deshaun and I had that privilege. But after that, we had a young man come to Harrison again, a young black man, a YouTuber, and he came there with the same idea, I'm gonna make a lot of money. And after two days, he came to my office and he said, Mayor, Harrison's not what I expected it to be. And if you do an interview with me, I will put this out to the world. And I said, I gotta take this chance because things were not good. And I took the chance and he was a man of his word. You guys have never heard of him. His name is Gideon. You've heard of him. If you're 24 or under, you know Gideon. He is a world famous YouTuber, and instantly he's got 10 million views. Hey. How great Harrison is. So, I want you to, I want you to Google Gideon, J I D I O N, Harrison, and watch the 22 minute video. But then things even get better. This lady becomes Miss Arkansas. And she, immediately she does an interview with NBC affiliate out of Springfield, and she takes it on. She tells them how lovely a place Everton, Arkansas is, and the place that she grew up in. And I said to myself, that's the answer. Ebony and Deshaun and Gideon, you are the answer. You've been traveling on the state, telling them about everything. You've done the same. And we can't thank you enough. We've turned the corner. Folks, here is the great thing. Now think about this. It just dawned on me. I told my wife, I, I've, got a, I've got something I'm going to add at the end, and I really love it. I didn't even tell her what it was. <laughs> we, are, we are making a change in Harrison Art, the perception of Harrison, Arkansas is changing. And it's changing because of three people, Deshaun, Gideon, and Ebony. All three are people of color. Now think of that. Wow. That is so cool. Thank you for listening to that, folks. 
Please come visit us in Harrison. With that said, I want to introduce the lady I just mentioned um, from Harrison. She, uh, 2022, Miss Arkansas, Ebony Mitchell. And thank you so much for all the kind words. Um, I've known Mayor Jackson for a while. So like he said, I grew up in Harrison, Arkansas, and I went to school with his grandson um, and his granddaughter, Lainey. So thank you so much for those kind words. Um, Governor Sanders, thank you so much for hosting us today. And to Sean, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I don't take this opportunity lightly. Again, I'm from Harrison, Arkansas, but we all know the perception that Harrison has, and it's never been great the entire time I've lived there. But I did grow up there my entire life, and I can tell you that there was never one instance where I faced any sort of discrimination from my teachers or my coaches or my community leaders. But I did see one thing that was missing in my life, and that was representation from a woman or man of color that could show me the way and lead the way um, so that I could do something great with my life and see it that way I knew that I could do it myself. And so when I was in the third grade, I had a Miss Arkansas come visiting in school. Her name was Eudora Mosby. Um, she was the second black Miss Arkansas, and I'm the fourth. So there hasn't been many of us who paved this way, uh, but, but we don't take this opportunity lightly. And so when I saw Eudora in the third grade, at Eagle Heights Elementary School in Harrison, Arkansas. And when she spoke to me, I knew that since she did this, I can do this too. I just have to have a little bit of courage and a lot of grit um, and know that my hard work will pay off in the end. And that's exactly what Martin Luther King Jr. did. He was a courageous man and he brought unity to every community that he walked into. And so that's what I've been doing as Miss Arkansas and what I will continue to do is be a light and a diverse leader in the state of Arkansas. And with opportunities like this, I know that whoever comes after me and the millions of little girls and young boys that I speak to every single day will know that because I'm standing here and because I did it, that they can do it too. Because we have our first female governor of the state of Arkansas, every little girl in Arkansas knows that they have that same opportunity because of the courageous leaders that come before us. So one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that's been mentioned today a few times is everybody can be great because anyone can serve. And every single day I tell myself that quote because as I'm traveling throughout the state of Arkansas, which since June I've traveled a little over 30,000 miles, so it's been uh, quite the journey and my car is sponsored by Grand Chevrolet, so I love this so much. Uh, but as my journey in Miss Arkansas has been over the past six and a half months, I've had the opportunity to be in a lot of rooms with a lot of really great people. And one of those people is Dr. Deshaun Scarborough. So not only has he given me the opportunity to go into communities that I've never been into before, like Blindville, Arkansas, um, Monticello, Arkansas, in July, which is, you know Monticello in July, it's hot. Um, but, because of people like him who are paving the way and leading the way for not only young women who look like me, but for those who don't, for those who don't come um, from the greatest circumstance, like me. So I come from a single mother home. I'm the youngest of three children. I knew from a young age that if I wanted to pursue a college education, that that was going to be on me financially. So again, I thought about who I met in third grade, and that was Eudora Mosby. I thought about what can I do um, as a five foot two woman who, I play sports, but at five two, I knew I was gonna get a sports scholarship. So I knew that I had to figure out a way to pay to, uh, to go to college, and that was through the Miss Arkansas and the Miss America organization, and meeting leaders who were in the community, like our governor, like our lieutenant governor, like our attorney general, like our congressman, like Deshaun Scarborough, to lead the way and find a way to pay for that education. So throughout my time as Miss Arkansas, I was speaking to people, and really making an impact. Um, I won a little over $74,000 of scholarship, which has completely, thank you so much, thank you. It has completely paved the way for me to receive my higher education, not only my bachelor's degree from the University of Central Arkansas, but my master's degree from John Brown University in Silo Springs. And so 
as I go through my time as Miss Arkansas, which is winding down, it's crazy to say, this has been uh, the greatest journey in my life, but as I go through as Miss Arkansas, and I meet young people from all over the state of Arkansas, and even those throughout our entire United States, I know that now because they have seen me do this, that they can do it too. And I get messages every single day from parents, from teachers, from leaders, from state organizations that I have made an impact. And that's exactly what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s mission was, to make a lasting impact of unity and courageousness and to just be a voice and be a leader and be a light in the darkness. So that's what I've been doing as Miss Arkansas. That's what I will continue to do. And thank you to our state leaders and to everyone who leads that way and paves the path for all of us. I know that standing here today, I didn't get here on my own merit, but I stand on the shoulders of the people that came before me, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and all of the teachers and the people who have made me who I am today. So with that, I say thank you. I won't take much more of your time. But with that, I just wanna say thank you so much. There is so much that we have to offer this world. And remember that everybody can be great because anybody can serve. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Jackson. And thank you, that's Miss Arkansas 2022. Ebony Mitchell, thank you again. Well, we would like to thank you for starting your King holiday here at the beautiful Governor's Mansion. I'd like to say thank you to Governor Huckabee Sanders and the first gentleman, Mr. Brian Sanders, for opening your lovely home to us. And on behalf of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, we would like to say thank you to the Governor's Mansion staff for also helping to coordinate everything and make everything so beautiful. And if your schedule should allow today, we would like to see you tonight at the Night of Unity Candlelight Vigil at the North Shore Riverfront Park, 5.30 p.m. And for Arkansas's first Unity Fireworks Spectacular honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the 30th anniversary of the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. Well, we've enjoyed our journey today. We leave you as always with the final quote from Dr. King. What? is your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Thank you on behalf of Executive Director Deshaun Scarborough and the Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission. Have a great King holiday. God bless. <laughs>